Would you turn to First Peter chapter five? Five five. Is everybody there? Praise God. Let's speak it together, please. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you, be submissive to one another. That means respect one another. And be clothed with humility, because if you're clothed with pride, you ain't going to respect nobody. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting your cares upon him, for he cares for you. In other words, stop trying to figure it out yourself. Trying to stop figuring and fixing your own stuff. Amen. The Lord, can, he's the only one that can fix it. We can't. But he guides us to those things. So he's saying acknowledge him. Verse 8. Be sober, which means what? Alert. Be vigilant, which means what? Consistent. Let me tell you again. I got to, it's like I, we need to repeat this to ourselves all the time. We must be alert. I want to tell you right now that we are on high alert. God is calling the body to be high alert. Everyone say high alert. That's the name of tonight's teaching, high alert. We're in high alert status right now. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, devils, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may what? Devour. Resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered, I guess you might call that crushed, after you have what? Been crushed. Why? Because it produces what? New wine. Amen? After you've been crushed a while, <laughs> God will what? Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. And to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever and ever and ever. So we're, we're on a high status right now of alertness. Because of the things that are happening, many people are stepping in traps, stepping in uh, things that the enemy's snaring people. People are being deceived as the falling away, which has been happening. People are, what they've had in knowing of truth is being exchanged for the lies. They're willfully exchanging to, for the emotional exchange. You know, so many times people are, are going through stuff, and again, in this crushing, you know, it's like being on a potter's wheel. Or being remolded. There's an area where God is saying, listen, I want you on high alert. Why? Because I don't want you to be deceived right now. I don't want you to be misled. I don't want you to be in a place where you're exchanging to feel better. Does everybody get it? He's our feel better, nothing else. Amen. In Romans 13. Again, when you put an animal in a corner, it does everything it can to get out. And that's what the powers of darkness, the, the, the deep state, the antichrist regimes, they're in the corner right now. They're doing everything they can. The demonic forces are promoting and supporting these regimes of corruption and destruction. Romans 13, verse 8. Here's what the Lord is saying powerfully. He says, O no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. What's he saying? Get out of debt. Get out of debt. Because it's holding people. They're fearful that they can't pay bills and all kinds of stuff that they've built up. That's a trap of the enemies to put people in debt. Verse 9, for the commandments, you shall not 
commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, <clears throat> are all summoned up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this, knowing that the time that now is what? High time, which means high alert. To what? Awake. Awake. Out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. For the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Again, there's an area where people are willing to go in debt so easily because I mean, they offer you credit. People are trying to sell credit cards and give you credit cards. I mean, the, the powers of darkness want God's people in debt. We need to get out of debt because it's high time for alertness. Make no opportunity for the flesh to, because it'll take dominion. And we don't want to feed the flesh either. We must be careful of those things. Amen. That's why he says, look, at we got to be on a high alert. Why? So you don't fall into a place where you're feeding your flesh. We're to be feeding our spirit and starving our flesh. Amen? Ephesians chapter 5. Let's just start at 5. Let's speak it together. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. In other words, be alert. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but what? Expose them. That's what's happening globally right now. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. What? So you can see. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are what? Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. In other words, don't be deceived. It's our responsibility to cross over to, into God's presence. And be careful, because the Holy Spirit builds boundaries for me and you, and we're to be sensitive to them. And when it says alertness, we're to be alert to these boundaries of not cross over. Emotional boundaries. Boundaries of thoughts. There are boundaries that God sets in each and every one of us so we do not cross them over. Even in your words. Amen? What does the word say? Say yes or no on anything beyond so many. Some of the people just like to talk, talk, talk. That's where people get themselves in trouble. Nobody wants to hear a motor mouth. Amen? The only thing it's good for is an outboard engine or something, you know. Keep the motor, keep the engine running, or the boat running, so they can get to the shore. <laughs> One of the things that's happening right now is we've got to get into a place where we trust the Lord in all things. We maintain a high alert of awakeness to avoid unclean fluence that dulls your spiritual senses. Many people's spiritual senses are becoming dull. Some of them totally nullified. We're always maintaining the fear of the Lord. When we begin to drift from the fear of the Lord, you know that your senses are being dulled. Amen? 1 Thessalonians 4. 
You know, many people don't even realize because, you know, God said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Well, you know, you and I gain knowledge and we gain information. We should be seekers of truth in everything. Listen, not only do we have a spiritual battle, amen, but we, we battle our own government. <laughs> I mean, it's not easy. You know, you know think about this. I, and, and, and this whole Russia stuff just keeps driving me crazy. It's Russia, 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 Russia. It's pretty amazing that we give Russia $36 million a day for oil. Hello. We give Russia $36 million a day. I think I could live on that. Hey, I'll take a tithe of it. We purchase 560,000 barrels of oil a day, something like that. Now, when we had the Keystone line, the pipeline, that our government shut down, that was producing 830-something thousand barrels a day. Hello? Think about that. So, here we are, a country that has been taken over by the deep state and antichrist regimes, is trying to sell out this country completely completely sell it out and destroy it. And we know that even, I mean, anybody that had any kind of spiritual senses saw what was going on even when Obama got in office. Amen? You knew as soon as that man opened his mouth, if you knew, if you were spiritually discerning, you knew that what was coming out was lies. And his purpose was to destroy this country. And that's where we got a lot of Obama nights now. And it's continuously. Because it's the end time. Where the powers of darkness are trying to take over everything. And they have. But now they're being exposed. So now that the powers of darkness are being exposed. They're kicking and screaming. Lying and cheating and doing everything they can. Threatening everything. They cannot hide. And they will not escape. And they'll be all exposed. But it's a process. Amen. So you and I must be on high alert so we're not sucked into any of these things. Man, I'll be talking to a person one week and the next week they change their minds. I'm like, what happened? Oh, I was watching CNN. What are you watching CNN for, dummy? It's a corrupt station. They're nothing but lies. I'm telling you, it's incredible to me and how many people are hearts are turning or being compromised or being contaminated because they're listening to the voice of the strangers and false prophets through the media and everything else. They're not alert. They're not on high alert. You and I not, must be on high alert so that we are not deceived. Amen? Listen, it's not going to get easier. It's going to get worse. Chaos is going to continue. Things are going to get worse. And we can't get sucked into it. Amen? As long as you stay in line and you're in position with the Lord, you got nothing to worry about. Praise God. Verse uh, something. First Thessalonians 4, 1 Thessalonians 4.1. Let's speak it. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you, are, you receive from us how you ought to walk into what? Please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Your sanctification. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust. Like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and de testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he rejects this, does not reject man, but God who has also given us the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get that? 
Don't be deceived. Amen. Know how to possess your temple in sanctification. What? Sanctification from the world's lust and influence. Only those that are set apart can be in high alert. They are sanctified. If you're not set apart, you're still touching unclean things, it's impossible for an individual to be at high alert. Their senses will become contaminated and dull. Let me tell you one of the major things that will contaminate and dull a sense. It's called fear. 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 And that's what the enemy's trying to promote all the time. Fear. 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 That brings an individual in a place of dull senses and will contaminate it if they continue to allow it to penetrate. Psalm 35. Psalm 35, verse 1. High alert. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Powerful prayer. Plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Also draw out the spear and stop those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let those be turned back and brought to confusion who plot my hurt. Let them be like chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. For without cause they have hidden their net for me in a pit, which they have dug without cause for my life. Let destruction come upon him unexpectedly, and let his net that he has hidden catch himself into the very destruction. <laughs> let him what? Fall. And my soul shall be what? Joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like you? Delivering the poor from him who too, is too strong for him. Yes, the poor and the needy from him who plunders him. Now there's a prayer to fight. Amen. Fight, Lord, fight against those that fight against me. And Psalm 140. Fighting prayers. Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in our hearts. <clears throat> they continue to gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of ass is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purposed to make my steps stumble. The proud have hidden the snare for me in cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set traps for me. I said to the Lord, you are my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further his wicked scheme, lest they be exalted. For the head of those who surrounded me, let the evil of their lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they desire that they rise up again, not up again. Let not a slanderer be established in the earth. Let evil hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. These are two powerful prayers to fight. Amen. First Corinthians chapter one. Hallelujah. I was at an individual's house one day and they got all upset about what the enemy was doing. And they started cussing the devil. I'm thinking, what the snap, man? <laughs> Call him slew I don't know, all kinds of stupid stuff. I'm thinking, man, you know, I, I want you to know that it doesn't hurt the devil at all by any kind of names you call them. <laughs> 
I had to kind of crack up, you know. But people get so caught up and angry emotionally that they don't use the weapons of God. They use their emotions. And the emotions will have no effect on the enemy. Amen. <laughs> Verse 18. We need to be on high alert. <laughs> For the message of the cross is what? Foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through the wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. The Jews a stumbling block and the Greeks foolishness. But those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world that which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in the presence of the Lord. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 3. I was watching a video today of a guy who was in Ukraine. And he was walking in the main center that's supposed to be the hub of everything. People were going back and forth. He says, man, we still have electricity. We have water. We have internet. <laughs> he was showing he was walking like this. He said that you can hear explosions over there. But there isn't anything happening here. Why? Because what are they hidden? All the deep state facilities. All the biochemical labs. They're not there to harm any people. Then they showed other people with weapons. Some of them were fake weapons. They were like made of uh, kids' little wooden guns and stuff like that. You know, cardboard. Like I said, don't believe the media. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Second Timothy chapter 3. Everybody there? <laughs> I started cracking up. Second Timothy chapter three in verse something. Ten. Let's speak it. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, in other words, truth, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Lycium and Lystra. What persecutions I endured. And out of them all, the Lord, what? Delivered me out of them all. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will what? Suffer persecution, or what we call crushed. Amen. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue. In other words, you must maintain a high alert in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to save you for your salvation through the faith in, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So he warns us, imposters, more and more will creep up. And that's what's happening more and more. We must be on high alert. Philippians 3. You know, the word tells us something very important. It says that because of the God's elect, 
and the things that are happening, that time would move faster. I heard a prophetic word from somebody that's quite credible. One of the things that he had a vision, for, he had a visitation from the Lord, and the Lord was telling him that time is going to move faster. He said nine years would be like nine months, and nine months would be like nine weeks. Because he was talking about a nine-year sequence, um, which he was basically kind of like saying, Things are going to be at its the church will be at its highest its highest level in nine years, but it's going to go very quickly. Remember, we are going through a process of great exchange. You're going to see a lot of things changing. A lot of things will change, and a lot of things will take longer to change. Does everybody understand that? In other words, we're going to see things change, but some of the other things are going to take, it's going to kind of catch up to the, some of the things that are changing. Because some of them will be a small part change, but connected to that small part of change will be a larger and bigger. And it will expand more and more. In other words, one arrest could lead to what? Multiple arrests. Amen? So some of these things that you're going to be seeing, even globally, uh, there's going to be great changes. In fact, we're already seeing some of them already. In Philippians 3, verse 7. Let's speak. But what things we were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as what? Rubbish that I may what? Gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I do what? I press on that I may lay hold of the things which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to be have apprehended but one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching toward those things which are ahead I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus therefore let us as many as mature have this mind have this mindset and if anything you think otherwise God will even reveal even this to you in other words he's still talking about a high alert status Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. For you he made alive who were what? Dead in trespasses and sins. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Does everybody see that? The prince of power air... The son that's working in the sons of what? Disobedience. That's the Antichrist regime. Amen? Antichrist spirits. They're in working in the sons of disobedience. Three. Among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind or thoughts, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespass has made us alive together with Christ Jesus for grace you've been saved and raised us together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus powerful we're no longer those of disobedience we are those of the righteousness and if we're really truly walking in the spirit, we are know that it's a time to be of a high alert, more sensitive, more seeing, seeing things through, able to see through the veil, the veil of deception. And one of the things that's just essential is, you know, when we talked about fear is a, a big area of contamination. Not only does it, it, it interferes with people's sight and vision and perception, 
That's why it's so important where it says, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Because if you move out of, out of anxiety or stress or fear or anxiousness, you're moving into a trap. Every time. It may not seem it that day, but it will catch up with you. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12. You know, because one of the things that we're seeing is God's judgment in every country. Things are, God is judging certain things. Amen? And we know that judgment begins in the house of God. So we know that he's judging his children. He's, he's checking us out. He wants to know if we're genuine. He wants to know if we're uh, uh, trustworthy. You know, you got to ask yourself, can God trust me? That should be something you should ask yourself. Can God trust me? Okay, I've made mistakes here and there, but can God truly trust me? In other words, God is trusting someone that doesn't, I don't, I don't want to, I, I don't like to use the word mistake, but won't walk away. Amen? Won't give up. He's looking for people, that, he's not looking for perfect individuals, he's looking for people that are not willing to give up. Amen? Don't give up. It's the ones that give up and walk away that break covenant. Then they're not genuine. And he's bringing his body into an area of genuineness. Those he can trust. Why? Because he's getting he's going to pour out power and glory and more and more and more. Big time. He wants to know what we're going to do with it. Amen? Hallelujah. Hebrew 12, 25. Let's speak it, please. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Know this, yet once more indicates the removal of the things that are being shaken as the things that are made, and the things which are, cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving the kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and what? Godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. Again, what we're seeing also is not only the shaking of the world, but the shaking, first of all, for awakening. Amen. There's a shaking to awaken. And there's a shaking for the purification. There's that process, that crushing. So we can get more wine, more fire, more power, more testing. And that we can maintain a place of high alert. Psalm 7. In verse 6. Let's speak it. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up because of the rage of my enemies. Rise up for me to the judgment you have commanded. So the congregation of the peoples shall surround you. For their sakes, therefore, return on high. The Lord shall judge the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness, <clears throat> according to my integrity within me. O oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just. For the righteous God test the hearts and the minds. My defense is of God, who saves the upright in heart. God is a judge. God is angry with the wicked every day. He does not turn back. He will sharpen his sword. He bends his bow and makes it ready. He also prepares for himself instruments of death. He makes his arrows into fiery shafts. Behold, the wicked brings forth iniquity. Yes, he conceives trouble and brings forth falsehood. He made a pit and dug it out and has fallen into the ditch which he made. His trouble shall return upon his own head. And his violent dealing shall come upon his own crown. 
I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. And I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Again, we are also in God's judgment. It's also a season of reaping. So in this reaping, if he who sows to the spirit reaps life, he who sows to the flesh reaps what? Corruption. So if you're sowing things that are good, you're going to reap things that are good. If you're sowing things that are bad, you're going to reap things that are bad. This is a part of God's judgment also. He will allow the reaping to come. Amen? <clears throat> Isaiah 61. Starting at verse 1, we're going to decree this. Because without the Spirit of the Lord, you ain't getting high alert, I'll tell you that. You ain't getting no alert. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Now, I want to go a little bit further here. The next verse says, and they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall rise up from the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolation of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flock, and the sons of foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. This is ours. But first, there must be the crushing. Does everybody get it? So what we're seeing right now is a global crushing. Amen? It's a global crushing. Why? So everything can be turned over to the children of God. Hallelujah. And we're going to close in Malachi. We're reaching the Red Sea moment. You know. And even in the, and when, the, when they're exiting. Amen. In Israel. They had to go through. The plagues were released. And every time a plague were released. They thought. All right. We got it. Let's get out of here. It's done. They surrendered. And they didn't. So they would go through multiple places where they thought it were coming to an end, coming to an end, and coming to an end, but it didn't. And it took a period of time, didn't it? And then finally when the Israelites were released, then they still chased them. But God allowed all of this to happen. To what? Bring the enemy to the Red Sea and destroy them. So one of the things in your high alertness you must know that God knows it all. <laughs> and so when things occur, it's like, like, oh my goodness, I wonder if the Lord knew. You know? No, he knew. He knows everything that's coming. He knows everything. He's going to have the last say no matter what anyone says. And we know that Jesus paid the price for the victory. Hallelujah. So we're seeing all of these judgments in these nations, the crushing. Amen. Listen. We know that the Ukraine is a hub of wickedness. So is the United States. It's a tremendous hub of wickedness. It's an international hub. Through the governments and through everything that's been going on. Everybody's been, dis been blinded about it for so long. But now it's all being exposed. But God is judging all nations. That's why in tribulation, Israel will be the last one to be judged. How many of y'all know there's wickedness in Israel? Amen. It will be the last one that God will judge. And that will be in Revelation. Great tribulation.
Hallelujah. In Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels. I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked and between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. And this is where that high alertness is associated with you'll be sensitive. You'll be able to discern. That's why it's important that we maintain fellowship. Amen? Discern. What are we going to discern? All the lies and deceptions and we'll be able to see through the veil of deception. Staying connected in the presence of God. Look, at when you're going through something, just start praising God. Lift your hands and surrender. Praise God. Don't try and figure it out. Praise it out. Amen? We just read a few psalms here that are warfare psalms. They're powerful. God wants us to pursue our enemies. He wants us to destroy them. He doesn't want us to be wimps. Amen? So when you know you're being attacked in something, don't let it affect you. Attack it. Amen? There's too many casualties going on. There's too many casualties of war. And the reason is because people wait to get struck first before they struck, strike back. If you strike first, it's less that you're going to get struck. Amen? So stay on high alert. Be ready in season and out. Stay connected. Know your boundaries. And be able to discern. And if you don't ask for discernment and wisdom all the time. Lord, give me the wisdom and discernment I need with understanding. You have not because you ask not. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed with what's going on. We thank you. This is awesome for allowing us to be in a time and season of what's happening in this world. And watching your hand move. Knowing that you know it. You got it in control. And we just want to participate in everything that you have for us to do. We want to be alert and sensitive so we don't miss the opportunities to rescue souls. And be a sign of wonder for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.